is after my own heart because he works in the tradition of uh, Seawright Mills. You may not have heard of, but I'm sure you've all heard of the phrase, the power elite, which came from the infamous work of Seawright Mills. Eric Leo will be presenting on pluralistic ignorance, the effect of media consumption on the American public's perception of war. Um, so, first thing to note about this is I actually did a 14,000 word paper on this, so to condense it down into 10 slides is really hard. There's a lot of evidence I just have to leave out. So, there's the leap of faith that you're going to have to make. So, um, understanding war, obviously everybody knows what war is, war is and then pluralistic ignorance, I'll explain that. The historical context is I look at the Iraq war for pluralistic ignorance and then I will mirror it to the Vietnam war. So to get started, what is pluralistic ignorance? Well, um, as the researchers would put it, put it, it's a misperception of a group norm that results from observing people who are acting at variance with their private beliefs out of concern for social con consequences or behavior that reinforces an erroneous group norm. So simply, pluralistic ignorance uh, is a false social reality where the popular opinion is concealed. So for an example, we can say that um, students in the classroom, when a teacher comes up and after he gets done explaining the material and asks, does anybody have any questions? And then nobody raises their hands. Because of tertiary motives like not wanting to look like a teacher's pet or um, don't want to look stupid, they won't raise their hand. Creating a false reality that um, uh, the students understand. Same thing with drinking in college. A lot of people think that you know the majority of students drink in college. More majority of students don't. So in that context, it creates pluralistic ignorance. So uh, leaders can easily create pluralistic ignorance, whether that be in a bureaucracy or in a gang. Um, it's pretty easy because so say in the terms of war. Say I'm the leader and you guys are all citizens, and I come out and I say you know we need to go to war. This is what everybody wants. Is what everybody needs. Everybody's in the consensus. Now, all of you, let's say you don't want to go to war. All you're like, you're like the costs are too high. Um, I don't want my kid to get shot in war. I don't want the national debt to go go up. So, that's the consensus. But in actuality, it creates pluralistic ignorance because you think that's the norm when in fact it's not. So that's important to understand. Before I move on. All right. So. What does the research say? I did um, uh, just one article. I did it on pluralistic ignorance about sex, the direct and indirect effects of media consumption on college students' misperception of sex-related norms. So a study was done in Singapore because they recently lifted the ban on like sexually explicit content in the media. And uh, they would ask questions of students, it was about 500, where 56% were females. And the actual norms, to test actual norms, they asked, how comfortable are you having sex at the following periods in a relationship? First date, casual dating, romantic relationship, and then post-engagement. Same thing with per perceived norms. Um, estimate percent of students who feel comfortable having sex. So uh, you would ask me, basically, how, how many people do I think are comfortable having sex at the following stages? You know, first date, casual dating, again. And to, for a control, um, they asked, how often are you exposed to sex-related content? So how much media do you watch? So if we look at the research results um, about the pluralistic ignorance about sex, uh, it shows that media has a direct and indirect effect on the student's misperception of peer norms um, on sexual issues. It looks like the consumption of sex-related media was directly associated with the overestimate of peer norms. So most students were actually sexually conservative in that they would wait to have sex longer, but they thought that the majority thought that they would do it sooner. So, indicating that cumulative <coughs> exposure to sex-related media was likely to lead to a misperception of peer norms. So, other important research um, that I implement is the cultivation theory. Um, in uh, 1976, uh, where they state, the researchers, uh, Gerben and Gross, uh, television is a source of everyday socialization. Um, you get similar messages from programs, um, whether that be the news shows or ads like commercials. And individual, the individual eventually believes that they live in the narrative world as portrayed on TV. So if anybody's ever seen the uh, 1976 uh, movie Network, that does a good job of portraying that. 
So uh, there's also the uh, effect of persuasive press inference, which has an indirect uh, media effect. So what individuals do is they extrapolate general media content from specific sources. Um, and then individuals base their assessment of others' attitudes and norms on um, the presumed media influence. So we can say from the get-go that there was evidence of pluralistic ignorance was created about the Iraq war because of the statement that George Bush was forced to make on October of 2003 that Iraq was not involved in 9-11. So uh, this is one of the top researchers over at the um, University of Arizona, David Althea, he says, even though no one in the administration directly stated that Iraq was involved in 9-11, the innuendo, tone, and slant of numerous reports stressed the relationship before, during, and after the invasion of Iraq. So he, he quantifies that too. Um, but like I said, I don't have time here. Um, how pluralistic ignorance created support for the Iraq war. So even the New York Times came out and said they coddled sources and practiced hit and run journalism. Basically, they capitulated to the Bush administration. They just said whatever they wanted and the media picked up on it. There was also a competition between the media sources, like who could be the most patriotic, who could out Fox, Fox News, um, so basically. And then experts were US officials or pro-war pundits. Uh, very little, like it was, the research was, if it was all American sources, it was one to 25 ratio in support for war. And then if they had international, it was one to six. So Eastern Jordan of CNN actually went to the Pentagon and asked for approved indivi individuals to interview, which is completely against media ethics. Um, media uncritically looked at Col Colin Powell's presentation to the UN on WMDs and um, the media was like, basically in America said that was great, but international opinion wasn't, wasn't convinced at all. Anti-war voices were marginalized, like the protests on February 15th, 2003, international protests, millions of people before they even, um, I believe before the war even started, because there was one, one after it started too. But they didn't look into it. They covered it, but the view was spun, and they didn't support it, um, obviously. Uh, media reporting was what some would call militainment, military entertainment. It was told as a master narrative where like the military was the hero and the Iraq was the villain. We can see this if we look at, um, like I said, I explain all this, but just as quick examples like MSNBC, Fox News, CNN, they have unanimous support for showing a pro-war um, stance like Showdown with Saddam, Operation Iraqi Freedom, um, Road to Baghdad, you know, we just like to congratulate ourselves about Iraqi freedom, bring that to them. And it was dramatized with, if you think about it in terms of when, you know, uh, the news comes up and there's the dramatic music um, and enhanced graphics for how, how we were gonna do infiltration strategies, it creates a, a kind of an emotional involvement. Music is very emotional. So also there's 9-11, which created Nobody can argue that that created an emotional connection. And if you say that Iraq did it, then that creates an even stronger one. So if we apply pluralistic ignorance research to the Iraq war coverage, I would, I would say, because I couldn't test it empirically, but I have overwhelming evidence, I would say I found that respondents' media consumption was directly and positively associated with the degree to which the respondents overrested pro-war support. Now, this is, this is by their research, the pluralistic ignorance about sex, and instead of pro-war support, they would say overrested peer norms, sexual peer norms. So because of, I would say that because of cult and cultivation theory, um, it's, it's plainly obvious that it was covered as a storyline. And it's, perfect, it's perfectly synonymous with the cultivation theory about living in a narrative world portrayed on TV where Iraq is attacking even though it never did. Like it wasn't involved at all. And you know, that was, that's the reality that put, put forth. And then on top of that, perfect persuasive press inter inference where all of them, all of them were unanimous in their coverage about a pro-war stance. So uh, they sent a similar pro-war pro message, giving an indirect effect on people's perception. So if we look at the Vietnam War, I'm not even going to go into it, like, about the coverage. It, I'm just going to tell you that the it, Gulf of Tonkin never occurred. It's just, I mean, a lot of people know that. It's just clear as day. Uh, they uncritically... Uh, covered the war. Um, they just took um, the administration's claims like they did in Iraq, for instance. And then the pro-war media, um, the media was pro-war. People look at the media and say, you know, they came out against Vietnam, but that was only after 
um, universities like Kent State or grassroots organizations like Winter Soldier until it was so big and widely disseminated that they couldn't even go against it because it's what the people want. So if we look at it, it's basically the same effect that you get. Um, in, in very, this is like in very real terms about the influence of, of pluralistic ignorance. Iraq War, the World Trade Center, was attacked on September 11th. Three days later, the, uh, they gave military authority to George Bush on uh, September 14th. Only one person in Congress, whole Congress in the House, uh, voted against it. Same with Gulf of Tonkin, August 4th, 1964, was when it allegedly happened, because remember it didn't happen. Gulf of Tonkin resolution um, was passed August 7th, 1964, so three days later, with only two votes against it in the Congress, and those were in the, in the Senate. So what we have here is a re historically repeatable phenomenon uh, called pluralistic ignorance, in which it is implemented into the um, American public, disseminated through the media. And you can look at, at the Bush administration um, and the media acting as the minority, pushing um, a misconception upon the public creating pluralistic ignorance basically at a wide scale. That's the overarching. And I don't go into this at all, but it was directly intentional. We have evidence to say from the very beginning that they knew exactly what they were doing. Um, they just used, uh, they wanted a new Pearl Harbor as an excuse, and 9 11 was it. So that's it. Uh, thank you for your time. Remember that the assumption that others are different from themselves creates the pattern of pluralistic ignorance. And um, I will take questions at this time if anybody has any.